Hello everyone, and welcome to the History Unicorn Reddit Finds. Today we are exploring the world of ghosts, and hauntings from the subreddit, r slash paranormal encounters. Links to the original posts are in the description below. Let's dive in and find out exactly what's going bump in the night. Back in 2020, our house was getting prepared to move, so tiles and walls were being done. During that time, we were staying in the living room, to add convince. One night we were having some bud lights, when we heard the kitchen refrigerator open, and as my brother went to check, he saw the door slowly close shut. This fridge was an old one, that required some force to fully close. I believed him since I saw, like a quick millisecond of it close. Since then before moving, the stomping started, and happened for about a total of five times. Fast forward to now, we reside in a fairly quiet neighborhood, especially during the night. Last night before typing my first story, after heading from the bathroom. I heard the rubber seal of the fridge door fully close, which is difficult to do as you have to really push it closed. Before that, I've had tennis balls and remotes fall to the floor as I was walking away. I need to get something on camera before I just think it is paranormal, since I just look down when walking in the house during night hours. About three years into my life, my aunt passed in a car accident, and we always thought it was her, when something caused us to fall, or when something fell, but lately I don't know what is following us to cause stomping, and now just random objects keep moving. Luckily, I don't have any powers to see the deceased, because my sister has said she has seen my aunt in the rearview mirror of her car, and just in general sees things in her sleep. During her teenage years, she used to wake up in fields, or home when visiting friends. Since she has gotten older, things rarely happen now. I hope I can get some proof for once. Moffat, Texas. In the comments below, tell me what you think about OP's activity, is it paranormal? Do you think OP's aunt is hanging around? After high school, I got my first job working at the local strip mall, Coles. I always thought I saw Juanita. I'd walk in and she'd walk out, or I'd walk in and she'd be walking out, and I'd turn around and go, oh, hey that's Juanita. She was my high school crush. It was always like that, and when I'd go in to see her, she was never there, or a bunch of people got in the way. I don't know how long that happened, but a girl I went to school with came in one day, and I told her that I saw Juanita. She smiled at me, like I was crazy. That's when she told me that she had died in a car crash on her way to school. We got into a fight, or I did, because she was going back to her old school. I wanted her to stay, and I stormed out, and never spoke to her again. She died in 2004. I looked her up around 2014 or 2015, and found out where she was laid to rest. When I got there, the cemetery was huge. I just had a picture of her headstone. I got out of my car and said, hey guys, I don't mean to walk on your graves, but I'm trying to find my sweetheart. Any chance you can tell me where she's at? I think that talking to them, as if they're still alive shows some respect, or that I'm not trying to harm anyone. I don't know what it was, but I felt like. I can't explain it, but my eyes went towards this one stone, and I only saw the back, and that was hers. She gave me this Bible workbook, that has her handwriting. I only did one section, when she gave it to me. I've lost all her letters and some of her pictures. I cried and told her I loved her. After that, I never saw her again. It's 2022, about to be 2023, and I haven't gone back. I don't know if that's paranormal, or where to even post it. But everyone thinks I'm crazy when I tell this story. In the comments from this post, Fuzzle Fairy reassured OP. Your experience is yours alone, you know what you experienced, no matter whatever other people say. You have the final say? Paranormal is just a category. If you label it as such, or as something normal and unusual, is your call. Tell me, in the comments if you've ever had an experience like OP's. So I have two young, 11 months, small dogs. They're both siblings, and very stubborn and cheeky. When I don't wake up on time, they like to playfully nip my fingers, 
and elbows to try and get me out of bed. This morning I was really tired and trying to get in some extra time just lazing in bed. So I did my best to ignore them, but they kept nipping through the blankets, more than usual, yes, they're going through training. It was very annoying. That's when a voice, in the middle of the bed suddenly goes, hey. Both dogs stop immediately and freeze, look towards the area the voice came from, one of them looks around as if to say, where did that come from? And they both go curl up at the end of the bed calmly without delay. The voice sounded almost robotic, more male than female, and I could not detect any accent at all. Almost like just pure voice, without any external factors, if that makes sense. There's been no ghost activity at this house, rare for me as I'm a paranormal magnet, so I'm really not sure what it could have been. Even if a human had said, hey, my two doggos wouldn't care to listen. They do what they want. But something got them to stop nipping and sit peacefully. If I'd just heard the voice, I'd have assumed my mind was playing tricks on me. But to see how my puppers reacted was proof something happened. Definitely not what I expected from this morning. This proves not all hauntings are scary. Some are really useful. Let me know in the comments, what do you think made OP's dogs behave? In 2020, we moved to the apartment I'm in now, and it's actually pretty nice. They were newly built so we're the first owners, which confused me when weird stuff started happening. Usually, I thought, hauntings occur when people died, or there was a lot of trauma in the home. Then I realized there was trauma being born, and an overflow negative energy from all four people living in my household. Addiction was the cause of a spiral that became dangerous in the next six months. Things were tame, in the beginning, bags rustling, and stuff falling when nobody was around, the feeling of being watched, and glass broke a lot. My boyfriend collects bongs, and 65%, at least have broken in a couple of months, when he's had them for years. Yeah, some of it was explainable, but most of it wasn't. I think one of the things that scared me the most was this one night, my mom, my boyfriend, and I were in the living room. The music was paused, on Sublime, and my boyfriend and mom were having a discussion, while I was laying down on my phone. All of a sudden, there was the deepest voice I've ever heard whispering from an unknown direction. It didn't make any sense, and as soon as it stopped I processed what the hell had happened. I looked over at the TV wondering if something was playing, but it was still paused. My boyfriend looked over at me, and asked if I had heard it too. My mom thought it was me talking but it obviously wasn't. There was no explanation, and it had us terrified. Another time something happened like that, was to my boyfriend, and it was so much worse, unfortunately. He was laying in bed, and I was out in the kitchen making food, when he yells for me, and my mother. Panic clearly in his voice. We rushed to him when he explained a shadow black hand grabbed his ankle. He heard a plastic bag which was on the ground crinkle like someone stepped on it before he saw the hand. I posted another story which happened literally that day. I was trying to find if something similar had happened to anyone else, and after half an hour of searching with different keywords, I just decided to post it. If I think of any more experiences I forgot, which I probably have because damn it's been a long six months, or if anything else happens, I really hope not, I will update. Thank you everyone for taking the time to read, and for the comments in the other post. I enjoy hearing similar or non-similar experiences, so please share if you like. Let me know in the comments, what you think about OP's experience. What do you think is causing the paranormal activity in OP's home? I think a ghost is messing with me. Can they do that? It's almost comical, but I'm starting to think I'm cracking up. A few years ago, I discovered my mom's wedding rings went missing. Tore the house apart, found some empty jewelry boxes in the guest room closet, which was strange. I eventually gave up looking, and assumed they were stolen by the cleaning lady or something. A year later, I went out to dinner and pulled out a small jewelry box to put on some earrings. Wore the earrings, came home to find the missing wedding rings placed in this tiny box. Weird, eh? After that nothing too strange happened until now. I was staging the house to sell, and I had to move all my office equipment into the garage. So boxed up my keyboard, mouse, etc. After the move, I was setting up my new office. Mouse was missing. 
searched everywhere, unpacked every box. Weeks go by, and I just give up and go buy a new one. A few weeks after that I stop at a car wash and clean, vacuum, and scrub the leather seats. This car is clean y'all. I go home, park the car, do normal TV things, and go to bed. The next morning, I leave to get breakfast and the stupid missing mouse is sitting there, right in the middle of the seat, in the car in my locked garage. Like what? Last week, I was working alone all day at home, as I do every day. Left the house for two hours, and when I returned home, several kitchen drawers were wide open. Empty drawers. Nothing is missing, not even from the one right next to them with cash and credit cards in it. Why would a ghost steal a stupid apple mouse and return it three months later? Why would a person for that matter? I've now changed all the locks, and reset every code, and set up cameras like a crazy person. Human or non-human entity, I guess I'll figure it out eventually. The comments on this post are interesting. Band1 commented. Oh yeah, spirits can and will do that, I call them either pranksters, or tricksters, tricksters are more dark, mean in nature. I've had my TV remote disappear, from the organizer on the table next to my chair, only to reappear 15 minutes later, after I had torn the house apart. I found the remote under my mattress one time. I found my keys under the bathroom sink. One night I was cooking for some friends, there was eight of us in the kitchen, the spoon I was stirring the sauce with disappeared off the stove, and it was found an hour later in the guest room. It wasn't just me, the friends I had that came over every day, would have stuff go missing, only to reappear minutes later. Then there were times that we had to conduct a scavenger hunt, in order to find stuff. One day, we found my keys in a box that was underneath another box, in the guest room closet. One morning, I was headed out the door to work, and my keys were not on the key hanger, by the door. They had been there five minutes earlier, when I let the dog in. I looked around then went in the hallway, and said okay, I'm running late for work, please put my keys back, and I promise to play when I get home. I counted to three, walked around the corner and there they hung. This all took place in 1993, she is still with me, it does not get old, well it does, but she will back off if we aren't having fun. She really loves messing with my son, because he loves it when she does. Aloof, do commented on OP's post. A lot to unpack here. First off, the instances besides the silverware can be considered glitches. As in glitches in the matrix. Glitches in reality, etc. These stories are super common. I've read and listened to thousands of them. Most sound exactly like yours. Something is missing, they can't find it, it turns up in a very random place, right in front of your eyes. You put something in a box, you go back later, it's not there, it's now on your bed or back in the box after triple checking. Some people think this occurs because we, one, live in a simulation, or matrix and sometimes it breaks or glitches. Two, the current world or dimension we live in now, is not the same dimension we were born in. An example would be maybe the world really did end in 2012, or humans finally nuked ourselves into oblivion. The universe had to create another dimension for us. So since there are multiple dimensions, our reality may be intertwined in some ways with another reality, or dimension similar to ours. In another dimension you moved the ring for some sort of occasion. Then you in this dimension needed it for some reason, and it was gone. The other you put it back in the box when they were done. The other you put the mouse on your car seat, because maybe you didn't have room for it in the trunk, or forgot to put it in with the rest of your stuff, and decided it was fine to just leave it on your seat for now. This is called the multiverse theory. People who believe this theory think ghosts, are not spirits of dead people, but are just people living their lives in a different timeline. And sometimes we catch glimpses of this dimension. Ironically, the really cool part about this theory is the ghosts we see, are maybe just as afraid of us because to them, we are the ghosts. The silverware. Honestly, I can't tell you how many stories I have read, and heard about ghosts, and hauntings when it comes to silverware. Seriously, for whatever reason these beings just love messing with silverware. It's so common, in a lot of hauntings that some people, who experience shit in their homes, don't even think twice about silverware jiggling by themselves, in the kitchen drawers. I personally find ghost, a very boring subject. But yeah, silverware is freakishly common. Why did this start happening to you? I'm not sure. 
but I do believe everyone, at least once in their lives will experience high strangeness. Some are held a lot more than others, some it's just a one-time, mundane thing like a door opening by itself. Doesn't matter what religion or culture you are in or believe. If the activity makes you uncomfortable, you need to out loud cast it away by demanding it leave your home, and leave you alone. Don't challenge it, that would be a big mistake, it will just provoke it and take it as an invitation to enter your home or life. You gotta mean it, if you don't, it won't stop. In the comments below, do you think OP was experiencing a trickster ghost or a glitch in the matrix? The stories so far have been intriguing. If you're enjoying the video so far, hit the like button. If you want to see more in our hauntings or any of our series, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously or I can give you a shout out, just let me know your preference in the email. Share in the comments what you think about the encounters we discussed so far. This might be too silly for this sub, but I'm just looking for anyone who might believe me, and not think I'm crazy. My dad died when I was 11. It was really sudden, and me and my mom didn't see it coming at all. So, a couple of weeks after the funeral, I went to Walmart with my mom and decided to wait in the car while she went in. Being an impatient kid, I decided she was in their way too long, and went in after her. I walk in through the front doors and stop, trying to figure out where to look first. I glance toward the cash registers, and that's when I see him. He's tall, wearing a baseball cap, jeans, and my dad's favorite sweater, that he wore every single day. He looked exactly like my dad, but I thought it must be a coincidence right. But then, starts waving. I look behind me to see if he could be waving at someone else, but I was the only one around. I ignored him, and went to the clothing section to look for my mom, and I still wonder what would have happened if I had walked up to him. After looking around the whole store, I finally decided to go back to the front and look for mom there, and when I get there I find her, checking out at the exact same cash register I saw the man standing at. It's been 9 years, and I still think about this every single day, and I wonder if it really was him showing me where my mom was, or if it was just a coincidence. Sorry if this was long and confusing, and feel free to ask for more info. Here are just some of the comments from this post. Nanda Rourke's commented on this post. I definitely believe you. I've seen my dad several times since he passed. He promised me he would visit often and when it was my time to go, he'd come get me. Two years ago, I went into septic shock and I saw my dad in the ER, with all the staff working on me, and on the helicopter. OP responded to Nanda Rox's comment. That's such a sweet story. I'm glad he was there to look out for you. Sadako Shadows responded to OP's comment. My grandma has told me that after my grandpa died, she saw him and another man working on fence down in the field, my grandma lives in the middle of nowhere, and lives alone so nobody was on the place, at the time that she knew of, she said it looked exactly like him. And believes till this day it was him coming to tell her he is okay, and still fixing fences in heaven. She's also said she heard him walk down the hall, and get in the bed with her as well, just to roll over and see nobody there. I, for one believe her, so I believe your story as well. Brilliant Smell 288 also chimed in on OP's post. I think that's great OP. The exact same thing happened to me with a boyfriend who passed in 1989. I was at a convenience store on my birthday in 2019 and the same color, make and model car that my former boyfriend drove before the accident that took his life, pulls up next to mine. I didn't notice him pull up or going into the store, but when he came out I definitely noticed because the guy looked just like him. He had on his signature 80s outfit which was very dated being it was 2019, and the car was a 1986 Toyota MR2, and there weren't many around the area we lived back then, and certainly not many around 3 years ago. I had to ask my fiancé, who was in the store, and came out right behind him to verify that the guy was even there, what type of car, and what he was wearing because I thought I was hallucinating. I was in shock and almost in tears because it was so strange. Perhaps it was someone who was identical with an identical vehicle, and 80s fashion. I can't explain it, but it was cool once the shock wore off. I felt like if it was a form of him, he was wishing me a happy birthday. In the comments below, let me know what you think. 
Did OP see a manifestation of their dad or was it just a case of mistaken identity? Everything started just one year ago, last month. We are all in high school still, and are trying to get answers. This also is not your usual no sleep story. This is real, and I am nothing short of clueless. For context and credentials, so the story is believable. I live in the eastern side of Ohio, near the Appalachian Mountains. When the foundation of my house was being built, in the dirt that was being moved, they found an insane amount of arrowheads. I live on a rather large hill, and have around 45 to 50 acres of land. My family had an archaeologist come, and he has never seen this amount of arrowheads in one single site before, in his entire career. It is believed that my house was dug into a burial ground, or where a war took place long ago, in the Native American era. To further this, on my property is old railroad tracks. Unused now, but in the 1800s used frequently. According to my town's records, a train crashed and blew up here, killing a group of men on board. So it begins. The first night all started a year ago last month. September 25th, 2021. A group of my friends, me, plus five others were at my house for a bonfire. It had been something we usually do, and just to say, we do not drink while we have our fires, so we are all in our right minds. To start, I got up to put some more wood on the fire. As I was doing so, we all thought we heard my mom yell of us, hey. So, I called her and she claimed she was laying in her bed, watching TV and had never gotten up. We played it off as our minds playing some tricks, and we were just hearing some things. As the night went on, we started to run out of firewood. Me and two others walked down to the bottom of my hill, to get some more wood. When we came back up, the other three friends were gone. Just a joke they were playing on us, because that's just how we are together. We think oh just let them go for a little bit, without trying to look for them, and they will eventually get bored. A few minutes go by, and the three of us, who weren't hiding heard this blood curdling, screeching scream off in the distance. For reference you can see a lot from the top of my hill. We immediately get up worried, and nervous that it is one of our friends. We look into the distance that the scream is coming from, and we see nothing. The screaming stops and then starts again. We start yelling for our friends, and calling their phones. All of a sudden two of them pop out, and start asking us questions about why we look so freaked. We explain to them while still wondering where the last one of them are. The last person comes out, and we begin to explain to him. An expression falls onto his face, and we knew he had something to say, as well. As he was alone crawling up the side of the hill, getting ready to scare us, he hears someone ask, who are you? In a man's voice, another reference, there is a house that my family is renovating about 50 yards from the top of the hill. He was between the hill and the house. After telling him that no one lives there, and it is owned by my family, he immediately freaks out and says, if no one lives there, then there is someone out here with us. We all run down to my house, and immediately tell my mom about everything that we have heard. We go back out, search the house that my family owns, to be sure there is no one sneaking in, and living there. There was nothing, no one. My friends leave a few minutes later. I go back to the top of the hill, to get my car that I drove up. As I'm up there, I hear screams. As if someone was in pain, screaming. Moaning and groaning very loudly. I get in my car, drive to my house and quickly go inside for the night. This is just the beginning. Night 2 was just one month later on October 23, 2021. The same group of us were out there having a fire, minus two. Plus my dog. Two of my friends couldn't make it that night, so there are now four of us, and my dog. Curious, we decide that we are going to try to be a bunch of badasses, and go out and explore my woods. The woods we went to are located on the opposite side of my hill, from where the house is. This chunk of forest, takes up 80 to 90% of the land my family owns. We start a little fire, go through the game plan, and then we walk. They are all following me with flashlights, because they obviously do not know my land. I know every single inch of my woods, because I used to spend a lot of time back there. As we are walking, one of my friends asks, what's down here? So, I take us down towards the railroad tracks, where we hear some brush break. Thinking it's just a deer, 
or an animal, considering we are in the middle of the woods, we brush it off and just keep walking. I take them down into a clearing. It is a place that leads back to the top of the hill, if we would have kept walking straight. It is a deep, but small valley type area. All of a sudden, as we are walking, we all hear the loudest boom noise that we have ever heard. It was as if someone had let off dynamite in the tree lines above us. My dog even jumps. We run about 50 feet before regathering, and trying to figure out what just happened. At this point we are in the lowest part of the valley area. I shine my light towards my dog, and he is running away, back to the top of my hill. In my mind that scares me, because he is a German shepherd who has killed Coyote. I tell my friends to keep an eye out, around us to see anything. Me and one other see a set of blue eyes in the opening behind us. They move left and disappear. Then come back again moving right. At this point, we are all looking at them. We watch this happen two more times, and then the eyes didn't come back. Scared that whatever it was, was on the move, we ran back to the top of my hill. We took a break for a while. Decided it was best to leave the sleeping bear lie alone. Eight months later, in the summer, I have a fire. There was a lot that happened between two of my other friends, and our foreign exchange student went back to Spain. That limited the group to three. Me and two others just chilling out around a fire. Us three have done this around four to five times now, and the same thing happens every time. We hear faint whispers, but can never make out words. We hear brush moving. We hear cows that sound like that should be 20 yards away, yet the farthest farm is around a mile. Cows along with other weird animal noises, none of us can make out, and one of my friends is an avid hunter, and knows his stuff well. As odd and as weird as all this seems, ever since a year ago, around this time, I have been getting deja vu. It scares me every time I get it because when I do, something bad happens. Just some examples, my uncle died the next day, I had to put down my dog the next day, my girlfriend's mom has a heart attack, my girlfriend gets into a car accident, I break out into hives, many many other examples I could list on forever. Along with the deja vu, I have a reoccurring dream. Long story short, I'm walking in my woods, two of my friends disappear and there is this black outline staring at me. As I continue to have this dream over and over again, every time I do, I wake up in sweat and see the thing that was in my dream in my room. Just staring back at me. I can hear this thing whispering, but cannot make out the words. After a few seconds of its presence, it goes away and I, somehow can go straight back to sleep. In addition to the nights at my house, me and a group of friends decided to go to the famous Egypt Valley. Out to Louisa Fox's grave, death location, and to Circle Cemetery, one of the oldest cemeteries in the area. I'll spare you the details of all of those areas, if you want to know look them up, they are rather famous. Anyways, we go out to these locations, and as we are walking back to our cars, there are handprints on the one I was riding in. My friends, swear it wasn't them. One set of hands was freakishly huge, and the other set was very tiny. We compared sizes and none of our hands fit the ones on the car. Ever since all of this my life has been rather horrible. Very few things have gone good for me. Whether it be death of loved ones, death of a friend, death of a pet, sickness, injury, or vehicle accidents. Holy shit, as I type the last sentence, I get deja vu. I can't take this anymore. It's getting so hard to wake up every single day. I hate sleeping for fear of dreaming, and I hate being awake for fear of deja vu. I don't want anyone else to hurt, around me because of me. My friends and my family believe that a native spirit haunts my lands. Some of my friends believe that it's the men on the train, the train crashed one week before the time of the second encounter in 1886. My family and I are religious. I have tried to get closer to God and try to be a better Christian, and it has helped. My dreams went away for a little while, but as the time grows closer to the second encounter, it's getting worse than it's ever been. I have no idea what to do. All I want is some answers. Or for someone to tell me I'm not crazy. All of the facts I have given, aside from the archaeologist, are from town records from my town's library. The info about the natives come from simple online research about which tribe lived in the area I am in. Sure enough, the coordinates of where my house is compared to the area line of native tribes, sits perfectly on the split between Shawnee and Cherokee. 
which would explain the amount of arrowheads, and possibly what the hill I currently live on is used for. Someone please help me. Let me know in the comments below, do you think living on a Native American site is the catalyst for OP's paranormal experiences? About two to three years ago, I was working for a hospital, or rather the ladies wing. It was a new addition added to it and, in order to get snacks and drinks, you had to leave the new wing and go into the main building, the hospital, to get the snacks. By then I had my share of unexplained things. The older location, I am not familiar with, but you had to walk past some exam rooms and they each had a small changing room in them. While walking past one, I looked into one, and saw what looked like a bandaged up person crawling out of the fitting room, like the girl from the ring. At the new hospital, new building built right into the main old hospital, you had to walk up three floors with the face of the hospital being nothing but glass. I saw myself in the reflection, and I jokingly said, hey, I'm just here for some snacks, I don't mean to disturb anyone, but please don't follow me, I just want some snacks. As soon as I said that, I looked back at my reflection and saw a tall black shadow walking up behind me. I turned around and looked down the stairs, there was no one. I looked at the glass and there was just myself. A few months later, I quit and I still think about this when I hear other people share their hospital stories. Another time, I was taking out the trash, during the day, when I saw what looked like a black shadow, like when a cloud goes by, only it was the size of a grocery cart. I just saw it dark behind a car and a few seconds later, some nurses came with a body and loaded them up into an ambulance. I'll never work for, or at, or near a hospital ever again. No sir. Let me know, in the comments below, what are your thoughts on haunted hospitals? I posted this here, a while back, but deleted the account. When I was 10 years old, my grandfather passed away, leaving the old family home to my mother. It was one of those old Victorian homes. That's been in the family for well over 100 years. The house came with a plot of land, in the back that, at this point, was basically a forest of trees. Me being a 10 years old with a huge imagination decided it to be the best place to go to exploring. As I was exploring, I ran into another girl. I say hello and ask her name, and if she lived around here. She said her name was Kay, and she said her house was close to here. This made me happy, to have another kid my age to play with. I asked her if she wanted to play. She agreed. From then on, for a whole year, Kay and I were best friends, and played together after school and on weekends. The only problem was, Kay only wanted to play in the forest, and wouldn't go anywhere else. But again, I was happy to have a friend, so I didn't question it. But then, my other grandfather got sick, and was giving less than a year to live. Our family moved back to be with him for his final days. He actually lived for over another year, before we lost him. After a while my parents and I moved back home. But when I got back, Kay never coming over. Days went by, and then weeks, and months, and no Kay. Eventually I moved on, figured she moved away. It wasn't until 15 years later, I realized who Kay really was. My parents decided to move into a retirement community, and left the house to me and my fiancé. About a week into moving in, I was going through some old family photos, when I got to a picture of my mother, my grandfather, my grandmother, and another girl. But not just any girl, it was Kay. I was sure of it. I was completely freaked out. I took the photo to my mother, and asked her to explain, not mentioning that she looked like my old friend. My mother sighed, and said she never wanted me to know. But our family had a dark past. The girl in the photo was Catherine, my mother's sister. Who went missing when she was 10. No sign of her had ever been found. Even over 20 years later. It was suspected that a family member, who committed suicide not long after her disappearance, was at fault. This left with me for a while. But I tried my best to move on. But then we had the wildfires, that burned down most of the forest in our backyard. Thankfully our house had minimum damages. But forest was toast, literally. We decided to clear out the land. Which resulted in a terrifying find. While digging up one of the tree trunks, one of the workers found bones. Human bones. The police were called. And they did their police stuff. And determined that the body found belonged to Catherine. They determined she died not long after she went missing. Is this why Kay only wanted to play in the trees? Could she not leave or did she want me to find her body, and if so, why didn't she tell me? This story is heartbreaking. Let me know in the comments below. Have you ever found out a dark family secret?
When my daughter was two years old, we used to hear her talking, in the middle of the night. We had a security camera for a baby monitor, which was pointed towards the crib, in her room. On several occasions, while watching her, on the monitor, she would stare up towards the ceiling while saying, Hi, I'm Madison. This followed with what seemed like her answering questions with, yes or no. She'd hold onto the railing of her crib, and jump up and down, with excitement and laugh. She also would look in different directions while speaking. I never heard another voice, in the recordings, nor did I see anything outstanding. The few things I saw, I think, were water vapors from the HD camera. I felt comforted, but also a little scared by this. Once she turned three, this all seemed to stop, or she just wasn't noticing it. Some of the comments, on this post, are enlightening. Joe set 22 questioned OP. I wonder if maybe it was her guardian angel? I believe it may have been. OP responded to Joe set 22. I'd like to think it was, did not feel like anything negative. Joe set 22 responded to OP. I heard a psychic say one time, that there have been cases of people who hear their toddler laughing, and playing while in their cribs. She said it was their guardian angels, and that many very young children, including babies, have visitors from these angels. One of the few times, when I was very very young, that I can remember having a visitor, is when I was standing up in my crib one night, and I got a visitor. It was my dad, getting up to use the bathroom. He poked his head in my room to say hi. Not quite an angel, but he was to me, all my life. In the comments below, let me know what you think, OP's child was interacting with. This has been a crazy ride. And I'll bring you any updates, in future videos. If you've stuck with me until the end. You're amazing. If you want to catch more episodes in the hauntings, or any of my other series. Hit the subscribe button, and the notification bell, to never miss a future video. If you enjoy this content, smash the like button, and leave a comment down below. If you would like your encounter featured on a future video, you can send it to contacthistoryunicorn at gmail.com. You can submit anonymously, or I can give you a shout out. Just let me know your preference, in the email. Until next time, be safe out there. You never know what you might find.